everyone. I am Michelle Cooper, owner of Alchemy Accounting and Bookkeeping Services. And today I'm going to talk to you about mixing your business and personal finances. This feels like a big subject, right? Like, and this is a really, really common thing for uh, small business owners, for entrepreneurs, and they don't quite get why it's big, such a big deal. So we're going to talk about why it's never a good idea to mix business with pleasure in regards to your money. Feel like this is kind of like that talk, right? A lot of times with clients, I have to have that talk where, you know, we have to get real about what's going on and how they're self-sabotaging. It might be more comfortable to have that talk, the birds and the bees talk, than the money talk for some people. But really, there is no black and white when it comes to money management. It all depends on where you are now and where you're going. Maybe separating your finances wasn't a big deal when you first started your business, but as time goes on, maybe you're discovering that you're in a little bit of a mess and maybe the time is now. What we tend to forget is that our business is a freestanding, independent entity. So whether you're running a boutique online Etsy store or a mid-sized creative agency, separating your personal and business finances is a smart move for every single business owner. For many of us, life has been changing pretty quickly during this pandemic, and it's difficult to ignore all the headlines of rising unemployment and struggling sectors and these people thriving and these people closing their doors. Well, now is the time to protect your personal and your business finances. It's an essential step, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what level of business you're in. So why do we do this? Why do we advocate for separating your personal and your business finances? Well, managing your finances effectively is essential to the health, both literally and financial, of your business. A lot of us are staying like we're staying home more, right? We've canceled travel, we're working from home, we're date, date nighting in the living room. We have pretend vacations on our balcony. And as we shift how we do business, we kind of can blur the lines between business and personal. And we wanna be careful of that, right? The longer those lines, those things stay intermingled and those lines are blurred, the more difficult it will become to untangle them. So first of all, there is a tax advantage to separating your business and your personal finances, right? You may know the, the old saying, there's nothing certain in life but death and taxes. Well, taxes pop up pretty much anywhere and everywhere that money is involved. You owe them when you're online shopping and you know when you're making money from your business. Unless we do a deep dive into our personal taxes, um, like I can't give you tax advice on this, right? But what I can tell you that separating your money means you'll be able, you will be able to I, identify and take advantage of tax deductions that are key business expenses. So this includes taking your client out for lunch. It includes, um, oh, I know, those gold paper clips we all love. I'm really, I'm really particular about the paper clips I use and the pens I use. So let's keep these things separate and make sure we are taking advantage of all the business deductions. Separating your personal and business finances ultimately saves you time and money. And time is money, as we all know. So it could cut down on your the costs of your bookkeeping services um, and your tax preparation. When you take your business seriously, you should also be taking your finances seriously. Like your business is not a hobby, right? Neither is your money. Money is an emotional subject, especially when it's connected to your business. By separating your personal and business 
finances, you can give each category the attention it needs. Your business is no, no longer just a hobby. It's your mission in life. It's your passion. It's what you get to do. So identify it as that, right? Live it like that. Having separate business bank accounts, credit cards, um, and maybe PayPal account for your business makes you look professional. You're a real business doing real business things like all grown up. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, you'll want to get a separate business account. Don't operate your business out of your personal account, right? That's the first thing you can do. Uh, get a separate credit card account and you don't need a credit card in your business's name. It could just be one credit card that you identify as your business card. So for example, in my business, I have one credit card that is personal. And that's, and I write on there personal, any other credit card is for my business. I don't really like to use credit cards if I can avoid it. So just having that one card that's personal helps me be like, oh yeah, this is, I'm getting my hair done. This is a personal expense. So I need to use this card, right? We, we can, we can register our business, right? So if you're a sole proprietor, you're a corporation, you're an S corp, a, a C corp, an LLC, whatever you are, register your business with the IRS or the CRA, right? Get your business number sorted out. And now that you've separated your personal business finances, it's time to pay yourself. Cha-ching! As a business owner, you need to pay yourself a salary in relation to your holistic money management approach. So you need to put away money for savings and taxes. Um, there's a whole cash flow management component to this that I'm happy to have a conversation with you. Um, because that's one of the, my favorite things to do. But we do want to be looking at paying ourselves and paying ourselves appropriately. And of course, you'll want to keep everything organized, right? So have your money date. That's what I call it. Every Friday, I have a date with my money and it's a lot of fun. When I first started doing it, it wasn't that much fun, to be honest. It kind of sucked because I was looking, I was in a, a, a kind of like digging myself into a hole situation and I had ignored a whole bunch of things for a long time. And that's how come like, like that truly, that downfall in my life has helped me um, to meet clients where they're at where they might feel that their business is in a downturn. They might feel like they want to stick their head in the sand, or maybe they have been sticking their head in the sand. I've been there. And you can't have more shame than an accountant who's gone into debt for their business. So I know how you feel. What I can tell you is if you just take a step towards your money sovereignty, you will feel so much better. So reach out for support. Read my blog. There's so much free information in there. Take advantage of having a call with a professional. Connect. If you've already got a bookkeeper, connect with them. Tell them what you want. If they can't do that, then find somebody else who can. It's that simple, but it comes from you taking responsibility because you have an ability to respond to all situations and in particular this one. So get some support. It's really that easy. So that those are a few little tips that will help you uh, be more empowered, separate your business and personal money, uh, take this step towards your financial sovereignty. I'm Michelle Cooper. I own Alchemy Accounting and Bookkeeping Services, and we help entrepreneurs say yes to the mess of their finances and fall in love with their numbers. See you guys later.